Welcome back to Resonating Through Art, or this time, Resonating with Ceramic Resin. So, uh, have you ever gotten a little bit annoyed with the mess that resin makes? Well, here's something that sort of behaves like it, but is a lot easier to work with. So recently I discovered Mix to Mold, which is by Brea Reese, and it comes in a five pound tub or a smaller package. I decided to just go for the five pound tub and I'm glad I did because I went through a lot of it quickly. I also recommend grabbing the mixing container uh, with the tools. It does help to get the ratios. Uh, the instructions on the container work, but this just makes it much, much simpler. Basically all you need other than that is water, and molds. So let's explore how this works. So with the water side, you're just going to pour in to whatever amount that you're after. In this case, I'm going for the large batch. Then rotate it around and there's your dry. Now you're going to add the powder up to the point that matches your measurement. And once again, I'm matching the large line. The powder, when it goes in, will cause the volume to kind of go down. So just be aware of that. You're probably going to have to add a little bit excess as it dissolves in. Give it a good mix. It's going to end up being a rather thin mixture. And right now I'm adding a little extra powder because my volume went down. Making sure I get all the lumps out. They do make dyes for these. I did try them out and I'm going to be honest, unless you're going for pastel colors, the dyes did not work that great. Um, it said black, but all I managed to get was about the gray of the label on the mix to mold. So, um, you know, if you're going for pastel, great, but <laughs> if you're going for black, like I was, um, you're not going to get it unless you put in maybe the whole bottle. Not that I was going to try that. So now on to the mold. Pour slowly. And one step that I didn't show, I did kind of thump the container onto the countertop just to make sure that I knock some of the bubbles out. Be aware that when you're working with this, it does harden a lot faster than resin, which in a way is very nice because you can mold through things a lot faster, but you don't have a lot of work time. I'm talking like minutes. Now this particular mold that I'm pouring right now has a paw that goes up or I should say downwards and it's very easy to get a bubble trapped into there. So I've tipped the mold and I'm pouring over the top of the void for the paw and I'm letting the resin or the resin crete fill into that, making sure that I'm squeezing out any possibility of a bubble getting trapped in there. And I'm going to keep it tipped and as the volume gets up there, I'm going to slowly upright it until I can pour it totally completely flush. That will keep, uh, and you could use that technique with regular resin as well to avoid getting a bubble trapped within a mold. So the batch that I've mixed up, I could have done the complete amount that I needed for all eight parts for these molds, but I decided because I know how quickly, like within five minutes, this starts to, to harden. I really, really wanted to make sure that I do this in two separate batches just to make sure that I don't end up with anything getting a little bit too thick. If you start pouring it when it gets too thick, you're going to end up with some weird imperfections and some odd textures. Uh, it's not just going to be lumpy. There's going to be some disruptions. So just be aware. You want to do clean 
fast batches, and uh, yeah, <laughs> you just don't have a lot of time. So once it's all hardened, and I waited two hours instead of uh, just the one, just to give it a little bit of extra time to harden, especially with that one paw that's sticking up there. You just pop it out and you have kind of a soft cured ceramic at this particular point. So we just go through and demold everything, being very careful. It's not really delicate, but anything thin could snap. So you just want to be careful. And now put it up on trays to go ahead and dry all the way. It's going to take a while for the rest of the moisture to evaporate out. And it will continue to harden overnight. You just want to make sure it's got plenty of time to finish hardening and drying before you do any sorts of finishing. And there's a lot of different finishes that you can do over this. I was quite surprised. In this case, I am taking some acrylic paint with a very, very fine brush, and I'm going in and doing the eyes. The eyes on these little kitsune or nine-tailed foxes happen to be closed. So there's no real coloration in this case. It's just a matter of doing a nice little line to give it a little bit more definition. And I won't bore you by showing all of them. I'll just do the rest off camera. Repeat till done. Now you can't really pour the mica powder into the molds. However, this is something you can do on this ceramic resin that you cannot do on cured resin. You can take the mica powder and do a rubbing over the top of the cured ceramic because it has a little bit of a tooth to it and then you can blend it like you would say blush because essentially that's kind of what mica powder really is so i suppose i'm putting makeup on my little kitsunes here um, this particular color is a chili pepper it turns out to be kind of a burgundy red in a cured resin but on the ceramic it does go more pastel now you can use an airbrush and do airbrush paint over the top um, it's a little harder to control and very similar to how I am not having the pieces glued together at this particular point in time that would be how you would want to do the airbrushing just to give you the angles. It's a little harder to do any sort of uh, markings on these particular molds if they're glued together. It's just the angles. So just go through and do your markings. Blend them. Nice little makeup brush just to make things a little bit easier. Then I, I decided to go in and do the bibs. The little fur ruff. These molds really are adorable. I, uh, I admit that I was quite smitten with them. And uh, I like my regular kitsunes. I, I really do. But uh, there's just something about the attitudes that these particular little darlings have. Um, each of them has an interest in their poses. And I think that's, that's what makes them fun. I hope they're popular. We'll, we'll find out. I'm making a, a whole lot of them, so we will see how many of them end up staying with me and how many end up finding homes, or I get special requests for more kinds. So once more, I'm not going to bore you by doing all of them. Uh, behind the camera, boom, done. Uh, including their little tail tips to give them their nice little color. Now we got to glue them together. So using Gorilla Glue, just the regular stuff, you're going to fill up the little divot in the back. You 
and then insert the tab that's in the tail and now wedge it up against something with some parchment paper underneath to catch. A little bit of the glue is going to seep out, but this just makes sure it stays nice and tight. So everybody's all glued, everybody's all set overnight, and now that they're all secure, we gotta do their nice little marking. So I've got the chrome marker, and we're gonna give it just a nice little brushing across the top. I will mention you don't necessarily have to do this, but especially if you're going to sell these or you know give them to, to somebody else who may not be aware of it, the mica powder might rub off. So putting a little spray of like spray lacquer over the top of it is not a bad idea. But do that before you use the chrome marker. If you put the the lacquer over the top of the chrome marker it will bleed but you can put the chrome marker over the top of the lacquer so once you're happy with the markings and the noses get them all done and here's the cute little darlings they're all ready to debut and say to the world how mischievous and cute we are. And of course we have to do the special photos of them. It's a nice feeling, this, this ceramic. But you can also combine it with regular old resin. In this particular case I poured the tails out of regular resin and the ceramic resin for the bodies. It gives a nice little difference. So now you have a fun new tool that's really easy to clean up with just a little bit of water and you don't even have to like use alcohol. So have fun creating and happy crafting!